My name's Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So we are going to take a look at uh, part of the Henk Vega alum experiment. This is the first one that was done uh, prior to my visiting him and it has an aluminium cathode at the bottom here where we have this uh, lovely starfish and this is an anode here which is also made of aluminium and this came about uh, because of our observation that John Hutchison was using aluminium and uh, then my discussions with George Eagley uh, led to his uh, device using aluminium electrodes and I subsequently found that it was one of the three preferred elements along with beryllium and magnesium for producing clean ether streams uh, by one Nikola Tesla <clears throat> from the early uh, part of the last century even back to the 1880s. So um, what I'm going to be comparing this to is uh, some points uh, observed by Ken Shoulders uh, in the, this is document uh, from June the 29th 2005 called electromagnetic pulse source using fluidized electrons. Okay and couple of things that I think we'd be interested in is this SEM of Evo skipping across a film of aluminium on glass and so this kind of skipping across the surface and you can see a close-up of it here I think we're going to see something similar to that in our experiment and this is also a magnified view of the Evo breakup okay so bear this kind of imagery in mind as we see what we see and then the second is here's a, a vortical pair of evos and some odd movements with the evos but that's not what i'm mostly interested in i'm interested in this image here and it says figure seven sem of evo launching source from chromium film deposited on glass substrate this unique diagnostic technique shows that electrons flow towards the center launching point where the EVO departed into a low pressure gas environment and on to the anode. The electron flow direction can be seen due to the momentum imparted to the fluidized chromium that moved inwards instead of outwards on each of the current feed branches. The thinned region of convergence at this center is where the EVO lifted off uh, the surface for the anode flight. Without the use of high resistance chromium film this effect cannot be seen. And so what is he referring to? He's referring to the fact that electrons are coming in here and because of the direction of these globules on the edge of the chromium film uh, you can see the direction um, <clears throat> that it's traveling in not out and also the fact that it thins and that all these electrons must come down and, and form a more condensed state. I believe that that is essentially what we are witnessing on this system and I have a video of this that Hank Ewan took uh, and you will see that um, essentially you have this kind of round area here which kind of mirrors the anode here so you've got the voltage potential uh, reaching a threshold at this point causing this illumination but you've got these feeders in where uh, from this darker area you can imagine electrons that are being field emitted are uh, being drawn to these uh, tentacles as it were and then they are being drawn to the bulk structure and at some point when the field is strong enough they form evos now if I actually show you the video it starts off with a lower uh, uh, voltage okay and uh, you can see that it's kind of producing this pattern it's better when he zooms in here if we go here you can see and if I pause at any point here you can see it's repeated now it does have this kind of hole area in the middle and I put this down to the fact that uh, in this particular anode Henk drilled a hole in the center of it so actually this is a bit more like a cylinder so therefore the field at this point is not strong enough to produce this kind of level of illumination however the field between here is lower because he's got the voltage set lower and if you watch it Henk ups the voltage potential and when he does that it switches from this mode to a mode where it is um, doing more what we've been observing in these uh, ectons or evo uh, producing 
events in subsequent experiments and even in this experiment. So if we just there he switched the voltage up and you can see there's still a little bit of this aggregation but it's moved further out and then he puts the voltage up and it almost completely switches. So the speed at which the electrons are flowing towards the particular point for the um, EVO to be launched from uh, it's, it's so fast that you don't see the overall glow and and the structures on here are very very similar to those proposed in 1996 and onwards in the west but obviously it was done before then by George Messiatz for produ production of ectons which are exactly evos and they are effectively what appears to be a columbic explosion and uh, you can see he switched down the voltage here and we've gone back to this nice starfish mode. Okay so that is uh, the equivalence, I believe, of um, what Ken Shoulders is showing here. The electrons flowing through the aluminium here. And when we look at the cathode here, you're going to see that there's bare aluminium and then there's oxides and something else on there. So this is what the, um, if I go here, uh, we can click on that and go here and go down. This is kind of like what the a hole cathode looks like. So if we zoom that out, um, you can see this is a prepared aluminium cathode and he's used a grinder to uh, just clean it off and uh, give it some surface morphology. And if you zoom out of that to um, post experiments, this is what it looks like post uh, pre-experiment. This is what it looks like post experiment. You can see some of these striations from the grinder in there, but it's this overall pattern here um, which uh, allows us to um, see these kind of regular arrays uh, of black spots uh, and then the uh, lighter area between. What are these? Well if we go down this is the overall plate and you can see that uh, at this level it doesn't seem so spectacular. Anyway uh, the actual explosions themselves, these what I call ecton explosions, because this is what uh, George Messiatz called them. Uh, if you have the camera exposed uh, to a certain degree, you can see something like this, and that is okay up to a point, and we discussed this in a different video. And on this, if I can actually zoom in, so here I can zoom in, you can see here uh, the structure under here. Now you're going to see in a minute that uh, these what look like black spots here are actually raised areas and there are these um, lower areas which are the more bare aluminium. Okay so you can imagine that what you're seeing with that starfish earlier is the uh, field emission from the aluminium glowing and then traveling down these channels to a point of launching for the EVO and actually down here we have some smaller ones that have occurred within the same um, shot here, one here and one here and we discussed these in a separate video but this is gives you an idea of what it looks like and I have another image which we will look at now here and this is the same, effectively the same kind of, uh, in fact it is the same image. And um, all I've done in this case is I have, um, if I zoom out of the original one, um, mm -hmm. here, I've just changed the exposure level. So this is effectively boom, boom. And you can see that this is very, very spherical, albeit just slightly modified by the fact that there's a flat plate below and uh, there we go. But um, you can see the substructure of the cathode underneath there. Okay, so zoom into this as well. You can see effectively what we are talking about here. Okay. All right very very spherical expansion on this um, EVO launch, this EVO explosion. Right now we're then going to look at how this looks um, on the cathode itself. So here is the cathode and 
Um, what you can see here is uh, the aluminium, which is this slightly sparkly stuff. Then there is these kind of like out of focus uh, structures. And they are, if I move down and I might, sorry, move the focal point towards you, uh, towards the viewer, you can see now this is out of focus on the aluminium and whatever these are, um, are now more in focus now. Uh, Hank Uren, uh, on the suggestion of David Butlier, actually scraped some of these structures off to see if they were magnetic, and indeed they were, and also some parts of the aluminium anode was also magnetic, so we are going to find out what these are. But given the fact that we have this not thing that doesn't look like the aluminium, and it doesn't look like whatever these fluffy things are, which might be aluminium oxide, I would suggest that potentially, given our experience here, that things that look like this might be iron, and could they be crenelated iron microspheres, and could they be the synthesized during the uh, ectons, during the uh, columbic explosions, during these EVO launches, and is that what causes this breakup? I don't know. So there we go, and actually I've got a composite composition of a number of different um, uh, micros microscopy images here. This one here, I'm going to change the quadrant of the lighting angle, and so you can see that actually these things are quite raised up. So moving back round to the left and rotating round to the right. Okay, so you can see these are quite raised up because we're focused on the background here. And here I have another one, and there's this appears to be this glass bead. Now note the shadow is here and the highlight is here. So this is an internal reflection. So either this is a hemispherical hole in the center of this overall bit here, or it's a glass bead and you're seeing the backside reflection in there of the two LEDs from that particular quadrant on the Dynalite microscope. So again, here I'm going round to the left, going round to the left, going round to the left. So some very interesting data there in terms of the morphology. Now, um, the scales on this have uh, these white tufty bits uh, going from essentially about, I don't know, five or whatever microns, small ones down here, very small ones here, all the way up to about 92 or so, maybe a little bit bigger over here, 100 or so microns. And then the gaps between them are around about 100 to 300 microns, you can see here. So that gives you an idea of the scale. Now, without specular on, you get something like this. So this removes all of the reflection from the aluminium. And you can see that this is very white and fluffy. So my, my gut feeling is that this will turn out to be aluminium oxide. And obviously, alumina is something that Ken Shoulders used as a guide for exotic vacuum objects. And so this is a self-organized structure that allows for the um, guiding of a flow <laughs> of field emitted electrons to go to a launching point and so it's like it's it's almost ideal uh, in its production now i question whether this thing in the center of this uh, alumina thing might be iron and maybe this one is iron and maybe this is why we are seeing these magnetic things occurring this is with no um uh, uh sort of polarizing on and so we are seeing the specular reflections here and again we have a sphere here we have a sphere here we have almost potentially a buried sphere here we've got a black object here whatever that is we have a kind of look what looks like a sphere here we have kind of what looks like a sphere here and and buried under here so i don't know but uh, i i suspect given the history of the vega experiments and the fact that aluminium is known to fuse to iron if these are all iron spheres and they are part of the morphology of these structures and potentially they came from an EVO launching point or an ecton explosion, these could be areas where um, these nuclear reactions occurred. So I'm very excited to be able to look at samples of this as soon as possible. So there we go. And I will look at this, which is a split screen. <clears throat> and I've shared this already. Uh, and you can download a very high quality non-frame blended version from the YouTube link for this. 
uh, and it's uh, I think the video that you can download is Coulomb 4K Split. And what I've done is this is the as exposed uh, Sony Alpha uh, with a 70mm uh, uh, lens on it, uh, zoomed into the uh, cathode here, focused on the cathode, this is the anode. And what I did was, as I underexposed it over here for the first set of uh, images, and then later in the video, uh, when I change the parameters, and you can hear that in the audio when I'm changing the f-stop and the shutter speed and so forth, I then um, overexpose this side. So at the moment it's underexposed, and I've got, in this particular instance, I have a light coming from the side, which allows us to see what the anode and cathode uh, look like, and what part is in focus in these frames. I'm gonna step through these frames, um, and then I'll probably share these uh, raw frames for people to analyze, but it tells us a lot about what is going on. So here we go, there's our first uh, our ecton here, and it just looks like an arc uh, to you and me, but we have now learned that electrons are flowing from the outside through field emission, and they're gathering to a central point, and that, that is causing the ecton to launch, given the surface feature and all of the parameters uh, um, that occur in this highly self-organizing event. Now, after the explosion, you get to see some fragmentation. We're gonna see this much cl clearer later on. And then that dies, and then we have a little bit of a uh, thing dying out here. So what this shows is it's starting, the event is starting on the cathode. It's breaching uh, the, um, the uh, gas, low pressure gas in here, air. And then it's uh, finalizing its journey on the anode, and as we move forward, we can see that it's out of focus, but we actually have a, a little bit of heat glow here, which fades away in these couple of frames. So it's starting here, and then it's en ending its life here, and this is just what was being discussed by Ken Shoulders in his 2005 paper there. Okay, and it's nearly gone, and there we go, it's gone. Right, next frame. Now what's happened here is the shutter for the Sony has come down from the top, and this event started happening only when the, sh the rolling shutter reached here, so it isn't lit in the full frame. So this shows us, for all of this time, as it, the Sony Alpha was uh, taking this 100 and whatever it is, two one, one, two, one two hundred and fiftieth of a second uh, grab, potentially, or this might be one one hundred and twentieth of a second, I think it is, uh, uh, frame. It got to this point and it, it actually this event occurred and illuminated the frames from this point onwards. So uh, um, this is confirmation again that it's starting at the bottom and working up. And the next frame you can see now it's completely captured and you can see this launched thing out here and we're going to see more of that. And then you can see this is dying down and the continued launch thing is traveling off in this direction and we've got a little bit of a cool down on the spot on the anode. Okay, again, down the bottom, goes up links, uh, starting to die down. You see this breakup, you're gonna see this a lot clearer later. Some fragments coming off from the ecton explosion at the Evo, and it's dying down here. There's a little bit more fragments down there, and it's a little bit of a cool down here. Okay, okay. Again, this one, uh, you can see, um, I've brightened this one up here, and it's kind of a little bit reversed, so we're getting on to where I, I have this at normal exposure and this brightened and so uh, you can see this is the actual evo event and you can see the fragments coming off at this point so it's the initial explosive event and that has then got fragments here again you're going to see this much clearer as we go forward here's these fragments going off now this reminds me of what ken shoulder said the evo uh, uh, breakup and moving across the surface and here it's going moving across the surface and it's interesting you would expect if it was just kinetic it would continue to spread out in that vector but it doesn't it seems like they're trying to aggregate back together so i'm going to go back on that so here is the frame before, nothing happening. This is what you might see on most cameras, uh, but with this camera we can see into the plasma. 
and this is the initial breakup. So, uh, and you can see on the on the on the first part of the explosion, you've got these these ejecta coming out here from this central point, and it really is the very center of the center of the center that where the explosion occurs. And then you've got the breakup of the Evo, and it's traveling across the surface. So it, 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 it traveled this way, and then it kind of like changed direction and traveled all the way out. It looks like it's spreading, but for whatever reason, there's a bit of follow the leader going on over here, and it ends up moving up and, and following this trail, and that's the end of it. And you can still see the cool down here, okay? And it's cooling down. There we go. Uh, we've got quite a few of these to go through, and they all show us something very interesting. So here, again, another explosion. This is the Evo explosion, uh, the Ecton, this columbic explosion, but it's more than a columbic explosion. If you think about it, a columbic explosion is when whatever has come together can no longer withstand and, and share out the energy. And in my view, that would create monochromatic electrons at the point that it explodes. But it's actually more interesting than that. So at the point of explosion, from the dead center of this overall structure, you are seeing these things coming off, okay? And then next, you have the breakup. There's a little bit more, you can see the initial things that were flying off, they're a little bit more clear here in the overexposed. And you can see, in, in to a degree, there is uh, some spiraling going on, spiraling going on, on a couple of those. Okay, this is less interesting than the blast plates, because the blast plates can build up a much more, in my view, intense, coherent electronic structure that then breaks up, and this, this gives you these much more intense, huge, uh, um, spiraling structures um, that we've seen in extreme interactions and so forth. But anyway, this is kind of like a mini version of it. And you can see the breakup fragments down here, and there's a, a tail end of one going off over there. Okay, another one, the point of explosion, the spiraling thing coming off here uh, from the dead center of the dead center. And then you can see the breakup of the Evo as shown by Ken Shoulders in the witness material. You're actually seeing what it's doing here. Now, the interesting thing is, is it um, actually uh, the, the, the electrons that are coming out, they're kind of like joining up with the metal, or the, the, the Evo fragments are binding to the metal because it's paramagnetic. Is that what's occurring? Uh, and is it these fragments are only able to go where the bare metal is available and not where the alumina is? Because where the alumina is, is a guide for these things. So it passes between those bits. And you can see the fragments going off here with this spiral bit on here. Okay, so move forward. Again, another explosion. Boom, the bits are coming out from the side and fragments go off, and I believe that they are illuminating on the aluminium, not in the intervening parts. Again, another explosion. We've caught it part the way through its fragmentation, and you can see the fragmentation going off there. It's counterintuitive. You think if this is blowing, that, that blowing off there might throw things this way, but we're already seeing things going in this direction. But when the rest of it goes over there, they kind of <laughs> follow the leader, don't they? Um, so there we go. Again, this is part the way through an explosion. You can see an ejector here. You can always tell when it's part the way through an explosion, not on the initial initiation point, because you actually have uh, uh, some fragment coming out. And, and so, uh, you know, that gives you an indication that it's already part the way through explosion. Look at the fragments there. This is very, very similar looking to what you saw with Ken Shoulders. In fact, let's, let's pull that up. So not the launch point, but what I'm talking about is this, where he's saying uh, SEM magnitude uh, view of EVO breakup. And this is it skipping across EVO, skipping across the aluminium film on glass. Of course, we're looking at aluminium here. And so this is what I'm saying is occurring. Now, his is just a pure aluminium film, as to a degree is restricted by these aluminium oxide prominences. Uh, okay, so uh, we will go back where we are here. Okay, right, so um, again, so this is really rather nice. It doesn't look like it's any sort of um, kinetic movement, okay? So uh, to a degree, you can see something fired off over here, okay? So you would expect a momentum potentially in that direction. And that is kind of what you see. So they're fired off there. There's a kind of a momentum. It's not directly opposite where this is coming out, okay? And it travels to this point, but in the next 120th of a second frame, 
you see that it's kind of a bit going off that way and a bit going off that way. And then, then <laughs> this bit seems to completely disappear and join up with that bit over there and it forms this long trail here, very similar to what you're seeing on Ken Shoulder's work. And then rather than continuing in this direction, it kind of like changes to that direction, okay? And then it tails off and dies. And you can see how this looks when it's uh, overexposed. And this is might, might be what you would see with no normal cameras. Not a lot. It just, you know, what am I looking at here? I've not got an idea what I'm looking at here. It's not really making a lot of sense. So uh, the video that I produced had these overlays on it. And actually, I started capturing these frames after I'd put the overlays here. So again, this is the normal exposure and this is the overexposure. And the reason I darkened this down by changing the shutter speed and the uh, f-stops and so forth was to really have a look inside this plasma as it occurs. So we're gonna learn some more information from what we are showing here. So as I step through this, um, as I step through this, uh, you can see we've got a, a, an EVO explosion here. It seems to be already a part break up there. And there are the fragments going across the surface and the tail end. And again, that's the end of that. This is maybe, is this the very, very start? And it's often you see this uh, flux loop going on. And I would expect that that had, would have some substructure and we might have seen that before. But anyway, here's the fact that it's caught it right at this point. So just before this happened, it started to be captured by the camera in this part of the rolling shutter. So this is very close to the initiation point. And again, like I say, I believe that we are seeing there a flux loop um, going on. And we can see the break up here and it's making connection with the anode and then the fragments of the exotic vacuum object. And look at that, it just completely seems to change direction. So this is the start, it's breaking up, it's going in this direction. And then the next uh, 120th of a second it goes that direction. Now, is it because this part of the Evo died? I don't know. And this one broke up and moved in this way, possibly. Okay. Again, this is uh, this is quite part of the way through a breakup, and you can see some fragments that came off or, uh, or some uh, ejector from the event. Uh, you can see another ejector here. It's a bit lighter on this one. There's the fragments, and there's one little dying part there which still seems to make a bit of ionization connection with the anode. In this one, again, it's, it's part the way through an explosion and it's like part of the substructure has also exploded at this point. So you can see we have the initial explosion point, a vector here and a vector here from the initial point, but a fragment has come over here and it's self exploded. And then <laughs> bizarrely, it goes off in that direction. Again, this is very, very close to the initiation point. And again, it might not be clear, but you can have a look and download the original files. This looks like a flux loop, okay? It's not a singular point. Now, is it a singular point that then split into two sections and then there's some link between them? Possibly, but you can see that because the rolling shutter hit at this point, it's almost exactly at their point of initiation. And there we can see the breakup. And this is quite beautiful actually, because um, this particular sequence here, because if I put my mouse pointer on the dead center of that, yeah, if I put my mouse pointer on the dead center of that right there, you can see as I step forward, there's still a central bit there and a bit's gone that way and a bit's gone this way and here. Um, I will do some uh, more intense study of these things. Okay, and then there's a bit of breakup going there. Okay, this is part of the way through a breakup. We've got a frag, uh, so some ejector going off here. <clears throat> There's the Evo breaking up there. This is a, uh, you can see the ejector coming here. Fragments, not so impressive that one. Boom, lovely, lovely fragments here. Now, like I say, is it fragments or is it just where the Evo is skipping on the surface and causing emission of electrons from the bare aluminium and it's being uh, uh, missing or rather avoiding the alumina oxide we'll be able to know more when we analyze what those little trees are, are that we were looking at earlier boom 
it goes a long way this one look at that it's gone out of focus there but so it starts here this is the dead initiation explosion there's fragments here from the previous frame so you can see there's an explosion here from the initial explosion and then there's a couple of bits there it's almost like it's exploding on the second time it's gone over here then it goes up here breaks up and goes up here and that's it boom boom look at that <laughs> wonderful look look so that's the initial explosion and there's a particle uh, coming off here from the initial explosion uh, which happened quite quite uh, you know well before the start of the scan on the frame and then you've got three fragments here and then three and a bit fragments here and then it's four fragments and so on and it's kind of like got on the side of the frame there now this is interesting because it actually has this line and I think this is probably some sort of visual aberration but it is interesting that, that from the center of this it's, it's just coming straight down so I need to think about that what might be causing that but uh, yes it's definitely uh, an explosive, ev explosive event here and boom we've got the parts going over there boom now this one actually uh, you know it's, it's already well through an explosion at this point and you can see there's a couple of ejector here which are, are more obvious on the overexposure here and it breaks up but then there's another a couple of explosions from the breakup particles here so you know it's quite interesting and then it travels off down here as a collection it's a collection and you can see it almost looks like these two are linked and then this one is linked with this one quite interesting Again, another explosion with a fragment. These two fragments coming out, continuing. So yeah, this is a close-up of the overall structure. And so I think probably with that, what we have been able to verify essentially is that uh, yes, uh, there is a notion of uh, these things um, launching. Uh, and aggregating from a central point and um, which we showed by using this and that uh, if we turn up the power we lose this ability to see the kind of aggregation process uh, and if we go here we saw that it ends up being just sparking so the aggregation process is so fast that you're only seeing the actual Columbic explosions, uh, uh, that's the simplest way to put it, but actually they are the producers of EVOs and ectons, okay? And it's almost like the, in, the cell itself the, uh, produces a cathode, which is then more and more suited for uh, producing uh, EVO launches based on the position of the anode. And you can see it's different here in the center where there was a, you know, a hole in the center of the anode uh, which gave a different sort of field strength in the center compared to this region around the outside okay and uh, yeah so uh, we showed this and the intensity of uh, one of these EVOs explosions caught here and we showed the structures here and in fact uh, you can see in other work uh, maybe where he shows his devices for producing evos kind of like a ceramic here like a alumina and this is where the evo is being channeled down so these if they are alumina or um, most likely alumina but potentially if a proton from the hydrogen from either added hydrogen or the um, water that's in there if that has produced uh, silicon this could be silicon dioxide either way it's an uh, insulator yeah, silicon dioxide is a very very good uh, dielectric and so these would be the channels upon uh, through which uh, you would expect the kind of effects that uh, we were discussing occurring due to this kind of effect and leading to the skipping along the surface that we have observed so yes, and this in my theory could be potentially an iron ball and if so we are creating a lot of iron from aluminium here. 
and so you can see how prone they are from the surface and um, that was the Coulomb events. So that I think is what I wanted to share with you today. I think we have verified Ken Shoulder's production of fluid, fluidized electrons and we have seen how they occur and um, the observations of them skipping. Uh, maybe we can find a single frame. There we go. So skipping along the surface uh, like he observed here and uh, launching like he described in this image here. But this is just a lower voltage. So thank you very much for your time and I will see you in the next video.